The third step is cross hybridization of the selected parents. So now we have created pure lines of the parent plants. We can then cross pollinate them to create the desired progeny. It will then bring together the desired traits in different plant lines into one plant line. For example, to create a disease resistant corn plant with deep yellow kernels, we can choose a corn plant line with deep yellow kernels and another disease resistant line for cross pollination. Now this produces a crop with an appealing color and one that will be resistant to diseases. Such an offspring produced by crossing two pure lines is called an F1 hybrid. We have learned this in genetics, right? Now because we have pure lines being crossed, the F1 hybrids we get are superior to both their parents as they have the superior qualities of both their parents. And this sort of tendency of hybrids to acquire the superior characteristics of both the parents is called hybrid vigor or heterosis. So how is this cross hybridization typically done, right? It's actually done by a method called artificial hybridization. Now artificial hybridization is the production of hybrids by cross pollinating two separate plants under control conditions often under the supervision of a plant breeder. When breeding two plants, the major concern is that the female parent should be protected from contamination by an unwanted pollen grain. This ensures that only the pollen from the desired male plant would cross pollinate the female. Moreover, if the plant is bisexual, there are chances of self pollination when we specifically want the pollen from a, another selected male plant, right? So in such cases, the anthers of the bisexual plant are removed manually from the flower bird. This process of removal of anthers is called emasculation. Manual emasculation is quite common in breeding experiments, but it's a very tedious process and usually requires kill labor. Emasculation can also be achieved by suction pressure, alcohol treatment, and also by use of chemicals that cause male sterility. But whatever be the technique used, care is taken to not damage the stigma as it has to receive the desired pollen grains. After emasculation, in fact, soon after emasculation, to prevent unwanted contamination of the stigma, it is covered with a paper bag, usually made up of butter paper. This process is called bagging. The bags are tied to the base of the inflorescence or to the stalk of the flower with the help of pins or a piece of tread. The flowers are left as such until the stigma becomes receptive. Thereafter, mature and viable pollen grains are collected from the other parent plant and brushed onto the receptive stigma with the help of a brush. The flowers are then rebagged to avoid any contamination and allowed to develop into fruits. This is the process of artificial hybridization. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Baiju's the learning app today.